Hello everyone, we talked about the holes uh, that are available inside the face-centered cubic unit cell and the simple cubic cell, and that cations would occupy uh, certain holes and give us certain structures. Now we're gonna be looking at how to rationalize the stoichiometry of the ionic compound based upon the structure formed. So the rock salt structure is one in which the anions occupy a face-centered cubic unit cell and the cations occupy all of the octahedral holes. If we're looking at the stoichiometry, we need to know what's actually contained inside the unit cell. The portions we're adding up, we have eight chloride ions that count as an eight. They're in the quarters. And then we have six chloride ions on the faces and they, are in, um, they count as one half. And so therefore we have four chloride ions per unit cell. That's one that you would memorize anyway because that's the face-centered cubic unit cell. So we have four chloride ions and we have, must have, because it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, we must also have four cations. So if you look at the octahedral holes, again, we went through this process earlier. There's one in the center, it counts completely, and there are 12 on the edges and they count as a fourth. And so that's a total of four cations. So the stoichiometry is one-to-one. Um, other ionic compounds that would adopt this structure other than sodium chloride would be a silver chloride, calcium sulfide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium oxide. All right, remember the comparison of the holes, as we discussed earlier, the size of the holes varies depends on, depending on the location of the holes. So an octahedral hole is much smaller than a cubic hole that's in a simple cubic. Um, so in comparison, cesium chloride structure on the left compared to the rock salt structure on the right, we see that the anion and the cation in the cesium chloride structure are very close in size, whereas in sodium chloride, they're much different in size because of the size of the octahedral holes being much smaller. So it is the size that really dictates what type of structure can be adopted, as well as the stoichiometry. So let's look at zinc blend. If we look at zinc blend, zinc sulfide is an example. Zinc and sulfur must be one-to-one. -one. So we see that the gray, the zinc, occupy only half of the possible um, tetrahedral holes in the face-centered cubic unit cell. Another example of tetrahedral holes being filled was the fluoride antifluoride structure that I mentioned in the earlier lecture. In that case, there was uh, two of the counter ions instead of one for every one of the um, unit ions for the anion portion. So the anion is in the face-centered. There's therefore four of those. And if only half of the tetrahedral holes are filled, then that will be one-to-one. -one. Um, so zinc blend, one-to-one -one stoichiometry, and then we have half of those being filled. Okay, so we can use this idea of portions of different atoms existing in the unit cell to actually come up with the stoichiometry. So here's a very complex example here. Remember I mentioned earlier that there are lots of different possibilities. Uh, unit cells that we mentioned are just the common ones, but we have uh, complicated ones such as the ceramic shown here. And we can go through here and try to figure out which of the elements is represented in the orange, which is represented in the um, green, which is the white. So I could just look at this and I can say, well, I do have two of the green, so that must be the barium. They're completely inside. All right, I have one of the white, so that must be my first element. And then I can look at this and say, hmm, I have in the orange, I have all of the corners completely filled. So that represents one atom. And then I have two, four, six, eight orange ones on the edges. So eight times a fourth is gonna be two. So I have three total of the orange. So that must be the copper. And then I could go through the process of figuring out the red um, being the oxygen. 
Okay, so you will have problems in which you are asked to find the stoichiometry. This is a classic example here. We can see that the gray occupy a body-centered unit cell. We know body-centered is two atoms just from memory, but you can do the computations. Um, and in this case, the oxygens exist on the edges as well as two being completely inside the unit cell. So we would have two plus, we would have the eight times a fourth and eight times a fourth is two. So we'd have four total oxygens and the final formula would be CSO2. Again, what we just talked about now was the rationalization of stoichiometry of the ionic compounds based upon the unit cell that's used.